Hey there. Let me read to you a really good description of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson. This is uh, written by Arthur Murphy, who was the gentleman who introduced uh, Samuel Johnson to James Boswell, who later became the uh, biographer of, um, of Samuel Johnson. They had a 20-year uh, acquaintanceship that went very, ran very deep. Anyway, um, um, Arthur Murphy uh, is describing in this introduction, this is the introductory piece to a 12-volume set of the collected works of Johnson. And here's a quote. This is he's quoting um, Lord Chesterfield, who was a who Johnson had aspired, had hoped that Chesterfield would be a, a patron to Dr. Johnson's uh, dictionary project, but it, it didn't work out. And I'm learning more about that here. When I, this is a letter that uh, Lord Chesterfield sent to his son, describing Dr. Johnson, who at this point was a recognized. Dr. Johnson is recognized as, as a literary and an intellectual giant of, uh, of 18th century um, uh, England, but a man seemingly who Lord Chesterfield could not love. Here we go. This is uh, Lord Chesterfield writing to his son. There is a man whose moral character, deep learning, and superior parts I acknowledge, admire, and respect but whom it is so impossible for me to love that I am almost in a fever whenever I am in his company. So now, Dr. Johnson had gone to meet Lord Chesterfield several times, and I know from other sources that Dr. Johnson is, I think the right of the word is maybe uncouth, <laughs> is not the most couth uh, in social corners, and Lord Chesterfield is, is well admired for his social, his, his social graces in particular. Um, so I guess he wouldn't be one that would fit well in with the uh, that society. Oh, and Lord Chesterfield is the Secretary of State of uh, England at this time. His figure, without being deformed, seems made to disgrace or ridicule the common structure of the human body. Now, Dr. Jo Johnson was an enormous man, large, large stature, um, big boned, um, and also some would call him perhaps grotesque. His body seemed to be misshapen. He, did, he carried it strangely when he moved down the street. People described him moving, oh, when he was on horseback. When, see, when he was on horseback, he moved as, as, if, as if floating in a balloon. But when he walked, he kind of had an ambulatory gait. Ga his limbs kind of flailed around. And when he stopped and when he talked, he gesticulated. His eyes twitched. His, his head moved. Um, he had, well, of course, we can't diagnose it 250 years after the fact, but um, he's considered by some, med some medical circles as one of the best described early, early sufferers of Tourette's, which, again, isn't going to go over well in, if you're trying to uh, win the favor of, um, uh, of the, of the, you know, in the social lights of England. His legs and arms are never in the position which, according to the situation of his body, they ought to be in but constantly employed in committing acts of hostility upon the graces. He throws anywhere but down his throat. So <laughs> I, guess, I guess when he drinks, he's spilling stuff off his side, right? <clears throat> and mangles what he means to carve. So if he's trying to c carve some meat at the table, he's just making a horrible mess, just, you know, instead of cutting it with grace and picking it and eating it correctly. <laughs> I've heard that before. Apparently this is, it comes from the fact that he was so poor and when he first came to London, he was a starving, star basically, he would walk all night through the streets of London with his uh, foul, uh, his friend, uh, Richard Shep, was it Richard Savage, um, because they had no money, no place to sleep. And so once he settled into society, he never lost his ravenous eating uh, habits, which really was a big turnoff to a lot of people. Inattentive to all the regards of social life, he mistreats and misplaces everything. He disputes with heat indiscriminately, mindless of the rank, character, and situation of those with whom he disputes. So he did. He, he tended to take on any man, even the king, uh, and uh, without regard to... Uh, although I, he had a great respect for the king, and he did have an interview with the king one time, so I, I can't just kind of imagine him... Uh, doing that, and I feel well qualified to say that, having read the complete work, the complete bio, uh, the biography of Sam of Samuel Johnson by Ra, James Boswell, and at the end of which James Boswell says, "If you've read this entire volume, it's fifteen hundred pages, then I believe that you are someone who is well acquainted with Dr. Johnson." So I just I can't since I I, I guess I can hold that hold that uh, position. 
I just can't imagine Dr. Johnson showing anything but the gravest, most gravest respect for the king. Absolutely ignorant of the several gradations of familiarity and respect, he is exactly the same in his superiors, his e to his superiors, his equals, and his inferiors, and therefore, by a necessary consequence, is absurd to two of the three. So he's not showing the necessary deference to rank, uh, and, and etc. Is it possible to love such a man? No. The utmost I can do for him is to consider him a respectable Hottentot. <laughs> Hot and taught, of course, being an uh, um, African pygmy. That uh, it was, was kind of a, an interesting fact of the world at that time. You, you run across hot and tots in this era of literature written and writing, just you know, referenced often. I even even um, Ralph Waldo Emerson references them in the, st in the United States a hundred years later. Anyway, very interesting. Uh, uh, now I understand why Lord Chesterfield did not become the patron of the dictionary, but left uh, Dr. Johnson to fend for, uh, for on his own, which he managed to do, although he, he promised he would finish the dictionary in three years. It took him nine, but uh, maybe with a little patronage from, from Lord Chesterfield, he would have gotten further along. Curiously, Lord Chesterfield did attempt to ingratiate himself to Dr. Johnson after the dictionary was published, um, hoping for an attribution or recognition in the in the dictionary, which Johnson did not give, and in fact gave him a letter, um, basically rebuking the good uh, the good Lord, the good Lord, <laughs> uh, re rebuking the Lord um, in in beautifully written language, so much so that Lord Chesterfield actually kept the letter that Doctor Johnson wrote on his desk in his study so that anybody could see it, because it was so masterfully written. And it is reproduced in The uh, Life of Samuel Johnson by uh, James Boswell. Anyway, very beautiful little bit. Got to be careful reading it. It's so old, so small, but hey, it smells like 198 years. <laughs>